Here we have our phylogenetic pasta tree. We are looking at the similarity of OTUs, which are operational taxonomic units. OTUs can be many different things like different species, strains of a virus, or different alleles. In this case, it will be different types of pasta. This phylogenetic tree will show a theoretical evolutionary relationship between the many types of pasta. This specific phylogenetic tree is a rooted tree. This means that we can see how each pasta type is related by divergence of a common ancestor. Okay, this is our example of an outgroup. It's the most distant related to other groups and diverged earlier. It has a potato base that sets it apart from the other types of pasta that are made from flour and a wheat base. This is also an example of anagenesis, which is the evolution of a lineage over time. Therefore, here is the common ancestor of these types of pasta. This common ancestor must have contained a flour and wheat base. This tree contains many internal nodes, which represent a common ancestor where the species diverge. For example, there is a node here, 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 and here. As we see with the many nodes in pasta divergence, this tree contains key examples of cladogenesis, which is the splitting of a lineage into two. Cladogenesis can help us determine the order of divergence for these pasta types. Let's go through the pasta type and see how each shape evolved. So you can see from the common ancestor, it diverged into the long pasta shapes and the shorter pasta shapes. Starting with the long pasta shape, we have spaghetti, which is the standard long pasta, and we can see that it diverged first. It is also related to angel hair pasta, which is just a thin spaghetti. Then we see a divergence of flat long pasta, and both linguine and fettuccine are flat. Going to the shorter pasta side, we see a divergence of stuffed pasta and twirly pasta. How it took longer to evolve into these stuffed shapes. Maybe because there's so many delicious things it could be stuffed with. For cavatappi and fusilli, the common ancestor must have gained a twisting gene because both types of pasta twist in some shape or form. So going at each node, we just have the long spaghetti, then it gets thin, then it flattens out, or we have medium-sized pasta, it gets stuffed, or it twists.